Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. Today we continue the Lean Startup series and the topic of today is the three engines of growth. The engine of growth is the mechanism that startups use to achieve sustainable growth. Each engine has an intrinsic set of metrics that determine how fast a company can grow when using it. Engines of growth are designed to give startups a relatively small set of metrics on which to focus their energies. So let's start by looking at the first engine of growth here, which is called the sticky engine of growth. Companies using the sticky engine of growth track their attrition rate or churn rate very carefully. The churn rate is defined as the fraction of customers in any period who fail to remain engaged with the company's product. The rules that govern the sticky engine of growth are pretty simple. If the rate of new customer acquisition exceeds the churn rate, so you're acquiring customers faster than you're losing them, then the company will grow. The speed of growth is determined by the rate of compounding, which is really just, the again, the customer acquisition rate minus the churn rate. A startup using this engine must focus on improving customer retention as much as possible. So, so it's absolutely critical that a startup can actually gain the customers and retain them. An example of a company that uses a sticky engine of growth would be, for example, an on-demand house cleaning mobile application. For example, a house tends to get dirty with time, inevitably. Like it's just one of those fact, ine inevitable facts of life that a house gets dirty. So something like a house cleaning app where you can book a house cleaning service on demand is a product and service that is just inherently sticky because a customer will need to use it repeatedly in the future. So it's very important for this type of company, it would be extremely important to focus on retaining those customers and delighting them and learning from them. So that's the sticky engine of growth. Now let's look at the second engine of growth, which is called the viral engine of growth. And this is a really cool one. So companies using the viral engine of growth are powered by a feedback loop called the viral loop. And its speed is determined by a simple math math mathematical term called the viral coefficient. So the viral coefficient is a measure, uh, a numerical measure of how much virality the product or company uh, has. So the higher the coefficient, the viral coefficient, the faster the product will spread. The viral coefficient measures how many new customers will use a, a product as a consequence of each new customer who signs up. So for example, I sign up for a product and I, t I tell someone else about the product, I bring in another person and that person brings in another person. So each new customer is bringing up, bringing in a new customer. That would be a viral coefficient of one, which I've actually drawn here in this graph. So you have an idea what different viral coefficients look like. So this would be, so V is a viral, V is a viral coefficient, and on the y-axis here we have users, amount of users, and on the on the x-axis we have time. So with so with time, how many users are we obtaining? And the viral coefficient would be the most critical key metric to be measuring here with the viral engine of growth. So companies that rely on the viral engine of growth must focus on increasing the viral coefficient more than more than anything else. This is the most important important thing because even tiny changes in this number will cause dramatic changes in future prospects for the company and the product. So a really awesome example of a company that used the viral engine of growth to, to grow was a company um, named Hotmail. You may have heard of it. So one of the most famous viral success stories really of our time. So for Hotmail, when the founders started, they could not afford an expensive marketing campaign. So instead what they did is they built a feature into the product. They tweaked the product itself. So the marketing, they decided to become part of the product itself, become a feature. So they're using engineering to, 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 to do their marketing for their product. This was very creative. So at the bottom of, of every single email that their user sent out, they, they added the, the, the sentence, PS, get your free email at Hotmail, along with a clickable link. 18 months, this was so effective that 18 months after launching, launching the service, they, they already had 12 million subscribers. And at that time, they actually sold the company to Microsoft for $400 million. Wow, isn't that incredible? So that's, that would be an example of the power of the viral engine of growth. And the viral engine of growth has to be inherent to a product. For example, 
um, a lot of companies try to look for vi virality into their products, but the reality is for this to, to, really, to really work, the product or service has to be inherently viral. So that would be the, the viral engine of growth. Pretty cool. Now, the last engine of growth, the third and last engine of growth is called the paid engine of growth. Companies using the paid engine of growth also use a specific feedback loop. Each customer pays a certain amount of money for the product over his or her lifetime as a customer. Once variable costs are deducted, this is usually ca called the customer lifetime value or LTV. So this revenue that, that, that you're getting from the lifetime value of the customer can be reinvested into the company for growth. For example, you can buy more advertising and just keep utilizing the paid engine, buying, uh, paying to obtain new customers and just, and just grow that way. Now, suppose uh, an advertisement costs $100 and causes 50 new customers to sign up. And this ad has a cost per acquisition, cost per acquisition, we call it CPA, a cost per acquisition of $2, right? So you spend $100 in this, in this ad, you obtain 50 new customers from the ad, therefore each, each customer costs you $2 to acquire. So that would be your cost per acquisition. That's how, how much it costs to acquire the customer. Now, in this example, if the product uh, has a lifetime value, that is greater than two, the, the product will grow and the company will grow. So, so for example, let's say the customer lifetime value of a customer LTV is $50 or yes, let's say $50 and it costs you to acquire $2 for that customer. Now you do have a paid engine of growth because now it's working. You're, think of the paid engine of growth as a, as a machine where you pour money from the top and you get uh, re customers and revenue from the bottom more than what you started off with. So pretty, pretty amazing. So, so in that example, for example, so you're paying $100 to acquire 50 customers, $2 per customer, and then you're getting, let's say for example, $50 per customer, so you're earning, you're, you're gaining $48 in that, in that case, for example, for every new customer. So, and, the, and then if, you, if that, you actually keep doing that, you're gonna grow using the paid engine of growth. Now, the margin between the LTV and the CPA determines how fast the paid engine of growth will turn. So obviously, the, more, the bigger the difference between the, the cost that it, of acquiring a new customer and the lifetime value, the more growth that you will have. So for example, let's say in this case, it costs you $2 to acquire a customer. Let's say you're getting $1,000. It's an extreme example, but let's say it costs you $2 and, you, and you're getting 1,000 from that customer. Wow, like, so you're, you're paid, so you're, and your company is, is growing fast because the paid engine is really turning um, here. So for example, startups who employ an outbound sales force to acquire customers are using this engine because you're paying sales salespeople. You know you have a sales force and you're paying them, and they're calling you know calling um, on the phone trying to to prospect customers and, and bring in new customers. So so using a sales force strategy would be an example of of a, of a company that's using the paid engine of growth. So a very famous example of a company that used the paid engine of growth to massive success was a company called Groupon. Again, you may have, you probably, you may have heard of it. So what Groupon did was they actually hired a ton of salespeople. They had a sales force that was just constantly calling local businesses and persuading them to provide Groupon deals. Because for Groupon, the most important resource that they had, that they have, is really the the supply. So the vendors, the companies that actually offer discounts via Groupon. So group, the Groupons. The group one discovered that the paid engine of growth worked great for them because they can just hire a ton of salespeople, have them constantly call um, businesses, persuade them to to come in, and then so and then for them, for group one in particular, what it cost them to acquire the customer, so how much they had to pay all the sales, how much the salesperson earned in the process of getting the 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 customer, the business. Uh, to, to sign in and then over the lifetime. So how much earth and the difference between that and the lifetime value of the customer. So over the total period of time where this business is, decides to stay in, in Groupon, how much did Groupon, Groupon earn from that customer? And if it's again greater than, than what it costs to actually acquire them, then they will grow and they grew like crazy. They grew of course to over $1 billion very, very quickly. In fact, at one point they had an offer um, by, uh, by Google to acquire them. For, several billion dollars to acquire the company. Um, so 
by the end, as we will see in later videos, as a startup tunes its engine of growth, it's getting closer to what we call product market fit. That product market fit is the point where the product or service satisfies a strong market demand. And that's, that's an amazing goal. That's where every startup really has that goal and everyone wants to get there, wants to get to product market fit. Finally having a product that really resonates with a certain market and it's something that people really love. So that, that's the, the three engines of growth in the lean startup. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Also, please subscribe. I'm, actually, I'm putting out videos very frequently, so you'll be the first one to be notified. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.